So today we're going to run through how to wash and dry a comforter, a queen-sized comforter. I'm going to be upfront with you. The queen-sized comforter is about the capacity for this machine to wash a completely full load. It's probably even a little bit big for this machine. And it's definitely over the recommended capacity for the drying. I have tried to dry the comforter twice. The first time early on after I got the machine, I had some success. I'm not entirely sure what I did and what I did differently. The second time I tried it again and I ran it for about three hours of dry time and it just didn't look like it was gonna dry. So I gave up and I let it line dry the rest of the way. Let's put this in the washer, see how bad that is and see how much of a full load it is. That's a pretty full load. That is a really, really full load. And as we look at it, uh, we're about uh, more than three quarters of the way up, maybe about five sixths of the way full. There's still a little bit of headspace up there, but my maximum dry line is right here. So I'm just over the top by another, if that's two thirds, I'm, I'm over the top by another half a third or a sixth of the load of the machine. That's going to be a limitation. We've got a couple of options here for how we can deal with this. There are easier options and there are ones that are just going to take longer and be more stressful on the machine. I don't know about the longevity of doing these loads that are larger than the machine recommends. So I'm not sure if that just simply reduces the effectiveness and efficiency of this machine to dry effectively or if it actually stresses out the machine because you're overworking its limits. I think it's safe to assume the latter just because you don't want to overburden your machine. But I think we'll get this thing to dry and probably after about three, four, five hours of dry time, we'll probably get it to be mostly dry. I might have to take it out, let it air out for a few minutes on the top of the machine, let some of that uh, humidity evaporate, put it back in. I might have to do some tricks that way to make it actually succeed. You could also dry it as far as this machine is going to go and then put it on your bed, maybe upside down and let it air dry the rest of the way and then flip it the other way around. What I normally do is I wash it and then I take it out to dry and hang it out on a line outside to dry. So you don't have an outside place to dry and you don't have enough room indoors to lay out, spread out or hang out a comforter to dry. So you have to then figure out some ways to make this machine work for your best benefit. Of course, the easiest option is wash it in this machine, then run it to the laundromat and use it in one of those big seven, eight, nine, ten cubic feet industrial dryers and dry it there. That's always a solution as well. I know you want this machine to be the magic thing. It is only as big as it is. And again, most conventional dryers are around seven cubic feet and this machine is only four and a half cubic feet. It is the biggest washer combo out there on the market, but it's not as big as your conventional dryer. So you have to scale down your dryer expectations a little bit to make them work efficiently with this machine. Power up the machine. It is a bulky, large load. It is what would qualify as bedding. So I'm going to choose the bedding cycle. That means I will not be able to do a dry cycle automatically. I'll have to wash the bedding cycle and then I will have to choose my dry cycle after it's completed. That is to make sure that you aren't immediately trying to spin out and dry an unbalanced load and bedding is normally going to be expected to be an unbalanced load. Remember bedding is big blankets that might be when they're wet, not evenly distributed in the machine, it's pillows. It's this queen size comforter. It is the big bulky things like that. It's not your average ordinary sheets. Your average ordinary sheets, although we would call them bedding, they don't have to qualify as bedding here. You can certainly run your average normal sheets on the normal cycle. They're just like any other cotton or that sort of fabric. I'm going to do a steam cycle because it's been a while since I've washed this and I want to get all of that cat hair out and I want to get all of those allergens out. I could probably do the sanitary or allergen cycle, but I'm going to do the bedding cycle because I know it's the bulky large item and the machine will be better able to handle the bulky large. 
I'm also going to choose the spin. Uh, when you're on bedding, you only have medium, low, and no spin options. When I do three bath mats, if I do medium spin, sometimes it can't get the load balanced and do the proper spin. So I have more success with the spin out on those uh, awkward bath mats and pillows and that sort of thing on the low spin. So I'm just going to do that. Of course, the low spin and the no spin are going to leave more moisture in our comforter, making it harder or longer for the dry cycle to succeed. The automatic dry prefers a high or an extra high spin cycle so that the spin extracts as much of that moisture as possible before going through the dry cycle. Okay, we just need to put some soap in. It's a full load, but I am not going to fill this soap dispenser up to max. I have basically been filling it up about a quarter to a half full, depending on the load. I don't need a lot of extra soap in there. It's going to agitate just fine. And we will start it. Uh, steam cycle is gonna be about two hours and seven minutes, and that's normal. We're gonna let that happen, and then we'll come back and we will dry it. While that's washing, uh, I just want to talk about, that was the comforter, that's what I call a comforter. And it's the comforter that's got the plush sort of fill that makes it a little bit plushy and puffy and uh, softer. That's what I would call a comforter. So the question online was, how do you wash a queen size comforter? There's no way a king or a cal king comforter is going to fit in there. So uh, if that's what you have, uh, then this machine really isn't going to work for you and you're going to have to take those king size comforters always to the longer mat or some other, somewhere else to wash. This is what I would call a bedspread, not a comforter. And this would go in there in the bedding cycle and I'd have better success drying this. But again, I'd wanna wash this in the bedding because as it gets wet, it is not going to equally distribute in the machine through the heavier spin cycles. So I would want to do bedding and I want to do medium or low spin just to keep the machine from not getting off balance. This would be about the same amount of weight as, a, as my queen size blanket, but it will fit in there a lot better than that big poofy plushy comforter. All right, we finished our two hour and seven minute wash cycle with steam and I could have done it without the steam and it would have just been the bedding cycle and that runs about an hour. The normal bedding cycle is a uh, flat one hour and that's a combination of less agitated washes that account for the big heavy and bulky load, but it knows that it needs to do it a uh, longer time so that it can clean the larger bulky item, and that's what we're left with. And as we look inside the machine here, we'll notice that it is pretty much full. The thing has compressed a little bit, and you know, we do actually look like we have a little bit more space. If I pack that down, it's actually lower than the dry line. So maybe it does fit. It's not clear in the machine's manual what that dry line, in fact, I don't even remember seeing the, the, anything draw attention to that dry line in the manual. Is that the limit for wet fabric or is that the limit for dry fabric? I am assuming that this is the maximum fill line for a wash cycle with dry clothes that you will then dry. I could be wrong. I could be mistaken that this is actually the limit for what you can put wet clothes in there and still have it effectively dry. So here we go, we're good. I'm gonna close that back up. Again, running through my options. I can hang dry it outside or somewhere in the house. I can take it to the laundromat and use one of the large oversized dryers. And then I have three or four variations of running things through this machine that I can do to make it succeed at the dry cycle. I can just run it straight through and see what happens. We'll turn the power on and I'm just going to choose my dry cycle. Obviously I can choose turbo or normal dry, or I can choose a time cycle. I don't know what the best time cycle is for this. I think the last time I tried it, as I said earlier, was I did about three hours of dry time and it was still damp because it's too bulky to really breathe in there. So I'm going to try the normal cycle and see what happens, but I got to get through all the 
time cycles and go back to normal. I am going to do a no spin. I know that I, we just did the bedding cycle and I chose low spin. So that means there's more moisture content in this comforter. So that's gonna take longer to dry. I just wanna see what happens with the no spin and see how that eight hours and 25 minutes after a minute or two of operation, see what the machine thinks is supposed to be the length of the dry time to get this from all of its internal sensors. So let's find out, shall we? I chose no spin, so it has a minute to think about the no spin and then do some sensors and then it will figure something out. And we still have some other variables that we don't know about. We've got that reservoir down there full of water, the pump uh, filter drain reservoir. So we could try draining that out before we do our dry cycle and see what happens, see if that makes it easier. In another video, I mentioned that there was a one review when I was buying this that seemed to imply that that reservoir made it longer and harder for the machine to dry because the machine had to evaporate all that water. And I just, I don't think that's realistic expectation of what that water is because even after a dry cycle, there's still water in there. So I can drain it and then I can do a dry cycle and I'll come back and somehow that pump filter drain reservoir has water in it again. If the dry process was evaporating that water, I would think that the reservoir would have stayed dry throughout the whole dry cycle. So it's saying an hour and 31 minutes. I know that's not gonna work, but we can let it run or we can stop it and we can try and do a spin before and try to extract more water. And that's what I want to do here. So we're going to stop this. It's going to stop it all, all outright. When you choose bedding, you can't do an automatic dry. And when you choose bedding, you can't choose high or extra high spin. But I think this is not the same thing as a blanket. And I think this is not the same thing as some of the bulkier pillow item types things you would do in a bedding cycle. So I'm going to put it on normal and then uh, let it do. I'm going to choose a high spin rather than an extra high. See if we can extract more water first and see if that shaves anything off of the time. I was really expecting it to be three to five hours of dry time for the uh, comforter. So if it actually dries in an hour and a half, I am going to totally be surprised. When you stop the dry cycle mid-season, it has to take a lot, it takes about a minute to be able to unlock the machine. I said mid-season, what? Mid-cycle. Boop, 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 boop. So we'll start this and it'll do 30 minutes of spin and then we will stop and see what it thinks is the real dry time. See if it changes it from an hour and a half to something shorter. See if it uh, figures out that it's actually going to be longer because it's big and bulky. I, it, I don't think it can tell by the weight or the big and bulkiness of it. I'm not sure what sensors they have there, but I do know the last one I was doing, I did about three hours of dry time and just gave up. And that was almost six, eight months ago before I just stopped even trying to dry the comforters in the machine. So uh, we shall see. I'll come back to this in a bit. As you can see, we're only a couple minutes into the spin cycle. I'm on high spin and I'm actually achieving a normal spin cycle. So that's pretty awesome. Even though it is a bulky, large bedding material, it, the machine is able, it's, it's big, big and bulky enough and it's not one of the heavier things like a blanket or a bedspread that will all of its mass will lump up on one half of the drum. This one's big and floofy and the comforter will kind of distribute fairly evenly because of the weight of its nature and the shape of it and the bulk of it. I'm impressed. And it's uh, that's gonna help us speed up our dry cycle and improve our dry cycle for sure. If I just did the normal hour and a half that it wanted to do, I guarantee without this extra spin, that would have uh, not succeeded. Okay, I don't know at what point that it switched over because I wasn't in the room, I was in the other room not paying attention, but it says we're now down to an hour. I'll have to go back and look and review the tape 
and see what the, the video footage says. I had another camera on the timer and we'll see at what point it switched from eight and a half hours to somewhere near an hour. And we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens at the end of the cycle and see if it uh, actually comes out dry. All right, we've done the one hour-ish cycle of dry cycle, and we're gonna see how this comforter fared with uh, you know, a good spin out and an hour-ish of dry. And surprisingly, it feels dry. It feels a little heavy, like there might be some humidity trapped inside deep in the padding, but no, no. Oh my God. It actually worked this time. Well, that was surprising because I've said in previous comments on other videos that the queen size comforter is a little bit more than the limit of this machine, but it just succeeded. So, uh, all right. It might, you know, it, sometimes it's hard to feel if there's humidity or dampness. I feel a little bit of it inside here, but if need be, I'll, I'll leave it like I do with my sheets. I'll leave it out here, air out. I'll let the machine air out. And if it doesn't feel dry enough, I will uh, run another 30 minute dry cycle with no spin and see if that can't, you know, suck more of that moisture out. It's, there's some, some spots here that feel a little damp. It's just, it's, it's, it's spotty because, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not damp here, but it's damp here. And that's because there's just not enough room for the, the comforter to tumble the way regular clothes do because it's just such a big bulky thing. So yeah, there's some sections here that could use um, another 30 minutes in there. We're gonna call it quits for that. And that hope that answers your question about does it work for a queen size comforter?